this computer. I'm doing that. I'm doing this. Should be good. Come on, baby. All right. We good? I think so. We're rolling. All right, buddy. About time. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Up in a, in, a, in a prayer, Father Pat, go ahead. Give it to us. Let it flow. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God, everything we do, we ask uh, to begin with your inspiration. Continue by your good help and be brought to fulfillment according to your holy will for our lives through the grace of and powerful presence of your Holy Spirit, we ask protection upon those who are tuning in and upon ourselves, um, that we may better, uh, with docility, listen to and obey uh, your word, speaking into our hearts, drawing us closer to you, summoning us and beckoning us um, deeper into your communion, that we may be sanctified and made holy uh, so that we can be per reasonably happy with you in this life and perfectly happy with you in the next. Um, all glory and praise be to your name every day. Amen. I love it when he does that. I love it when he does that, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching and listening to the Holy Ruckus Podcast live chat edition. My man is chugging a straight up sweet tea. <laughs> That's right. Well, <laughs> We're all celebrating the fact that we are still south of the Mason Dixon line and having me some sweet tea <laughs> a day after our most esteemed holiday to honor the fallen ones. Here's to the fallen, those who paid the ultimate price. They, they, <laughs> there you go. Happy belated Memorial Day and happy, uh, I don't know, you sound like you definitely sound like one of them cats from Django Unchained. So I don't know if they were going for that, but it definitely sounds like that. <laughs> Guys, I, I, ladies I and gentlemen, uh, we are doing this through my profile. We had some little issues, but we're going to post this on the Holy Ruckus feed um, hereafter, hereafter the conversation. And uh, what's up, Father? Just holding it down, keeping it real, going from thing to thing. Um, to be honest, I'm like starting to get kind of giddy because like <laughs> got the guidelines and we're pouring through them. And we're on some kind of like silent, invisible countdown out there to public masses again. So I'm like super pumped. Good okay. Really and good. what? A, and whoa, 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 whoa. And like, what are they? And what are they saying? Like, what do you get? Like, what were you telling me? Like, some of the ways that they're um, that they're trying to get the word out here to you. Yeah. So, so we're talking about masses coming back, church services coming back soon uh, very soon or two soon. we're we're like expecting to go to phase one i mean the whole state is like under safer at home now mm -hmm. but like our county is not so we're expecting to go to phase one maybe as early as next week and if that's no true, way yeah yeah and you heard it here first for folks or 13th depending on how many times you tune into the news <laughs> But uh, no, we're, we're, we're moving towards like the promised land for sure. Like there's, there's something on the horizon that we're like doubting if that's a mirage or whatever. So I'm, I'm down. Telling you, I'm telling you, it, it's the spirit. The spurt is coming. Um, I, I'm down Thomas. I'm down Thomas, man. <laughs> unless yeah, I yeah. put my fingers in, his, in the wounds of his hands and unless I see Wendy Peppercorn, you know, at the pool, <laughs> getting ready. No, just kidding. Right, right. I don't see squints. It's not real. I got to see the pool open up. I got to see ice cream trucks are rolling. Yeah, exactly. Until until I get to, like, 
you know, open a hymn, hymnal book up to uh, let us build a new church, you know, I, I will not believe. Although, to be honest, we just got rid of all our hymnal books. Like, that's one of the guidelines is we're not using, we're not using stuff that other people can touch. You know, oh, right? there you go. Yeah. So we're getting ready and it's, and it's very, it's very exciting. I'm very, I'm very pleased. I'm very pumped. Um, so fingers crossed. We were really like, you know, crossing ourselves and, you know, sure. believe, I believe, I believe after, you know, as long as it took to bring championships back to Washington, D.C. and then it finally happened. It's going to be even longer. <laughs> yeah, the last one. Last one might is is circled on my you know twenty thirty five calendar. Uh, well, you got yeah, you got the nationals. The nationals got it for you. Yeah, they'll be good for a while. Um, yeah, we're a city of champions, man. For the <laughs> stop! Baseball, Just stop! <laughs> city of champions. You always the champions in the summer. It's when the fall hits and when the real sports come out to play. That's the only. That's the only sport that like gets so much attention, and it really doesn't need to because. What, the footy. Even, I'm a card carrying, you know, diehard skins man fan, but man, you know. God, Damn, y'all suck. <laughs> anyway, they don't want to hear that, Father Pat. They want to hear what we're here to talk about today, and it's oh. so funny because I'm here to talk about something like completely ridiculous, and because I think it's funny, so. Last week, around like Thursday or Friday, I get a text message early in the morning. This is smack like six in the morning because I get up and I do some filming uh, for some clients, one client <laughs> from a parish. And um, I'm getting this message and it says, hey, you're famous. And I'm like, well, yeah, but not for reasons that you would know. <laughs> like, you know, uh, no. Um, and so they were like, no, 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 no. Like your face is on the... Uh, he said the cover of the Dallas Morning News. And I was like, yeah, I don't think so. I was in and out of Dallas-Fort Worth. I don't think they got my face, my mug on there. And I didn't do anything that I would consider noteworthy to be placed on the cover. So apparently I was not maybe on the cover, but I was definitely on the homepage. Definitely on the homepage because old girl, rest in peace, uh, Jane Rowe of Roe v. Wade, uh, Norma McCorvey was on uh, was on there. Um, oh, the she, new documentary. Yes, there you go. The new uh, the documentary that was released uh, last week, Friday. Yeah. Uh, on her life, uh, she's the one that um, her. Wait, how do you say it? Her promulgation, her, her initiation for the the ability to have an abortion. She right. Was the, she was the plaintiff in the in the Roe v. Wade case. Right. She's the plaintiff in the Roe v. Wade case that legalized abortion uh, in the United States, and uh, it was a documentary in her life. She she had passed away, um, and uh, so they released this documentary way later. Uh, but whatever. Uh, and the and the crazy part is that you know um, when FX so FX right, um, they're not just showing Marvel movies. They're actually getting into the documentary <laughs> circle. Oh, that, so, that's me. <laughs> it must be legitimate. Yeah. Know? No, I'm joking, man. They can do documentaries. So why not, right? MJ got a documentary. Room Tom Brady everything. got a documentary. Why not? Right? You know, but, I you think know, I might just get in this game. You know. Yeah, you got to get a doc out there. Make my beard a documentary, you know? The yes. COVID beard. <laughs> the Pat Mullen story from, from early 22, 2020. The untold, the untouched story. I can't get over you with the whole thing, with the whole. Yeah, well, I'm not sharing it. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. <laughs> there you go. That's true. Hashtag That's true. celibacy. Like, you know, it's just my, my advantage. Um, so how, the detail that I'm missing is like, what what on earth do you have to do with Norma McCorvey and the Dallas Morning Star? In the like, Morning News. So the, the, the newspaper page had... Uh, Norma McCorvey on the, the, um, whatchamacallit, on the thing, and I was, uh, there too, so, uh, um, you, so you were, a, like, an audience member while she was a speaker? Right, so, 
Hold on. Uh, we ch uh, so. I mean, uh, you're gonna have to show this photo to the people, or you're a Gnostic. I like, know, right? <laughs> no secret knowledge in this uh, on this podcast. Like, you know, uh, picks or it didn't happen. Uh, picks or you're a Gnostic. So much more. Uh, so much more than that. Uh, Corey, uh, hold on, I'm typing up this status real quick. Norma. I don't really know Norma's story, but like, I think I'm going to have to check out this. No one does. No. Well, yeah. Uh, um, well, now they do. But I hope it's legit. Like, you know, because there's a lot of people out there that will just poo poo, poo poo, poo poo, everything. So, right. anyway, so, you know. so the funny part was so I get it. So, I get this text message, and hi, everybody that's watching. Um, so I get this, uh, this text message it says like, Oh, you're famous. You're on this thing and on this pro-life stuff. And they're like, Oh, the life site news has your, has your mug on it too. And I was like, oh, I don't want that either. No offense to life site news, but right. Not your bag. Not, not my bag. Um, but anyway, so, uh, and I am a card carrying pro-life member. I don't know if you, like, yeah. I, I believe in it. I believe in the mission. My heart's there. I've done some things. So anyway, when, um, when this picture was taken with, with, me behind Norma McCorvey, the uh, the uh, lady from Jane Roe, Jane Roe from the Roe v. Wade case. Um, I was fresh out of like maybe a year out of high school. Okay. And my buddy of mine, uh, a buddy of mine that asked me to join this like pro-life summer camp thing. <laughs> like it sounds geeky when you think about it, but it was like this, uh, this tour, like go from churches to churches and walk. And I'm and like pray along the way, like pilgrimage style. Oh, okay. Um, for Jesus and for the babies. And I said, you know what? I got nothing going on, and let's let's just do it. You know, I'm trying to lose some way. Like, what's that ministry called? It's like Crossway. Uh, it's called Face the Truth Tour. Okay. They have like really a blue shirts with white lettering that say pro life and a baby okay. on the O. And I was, you know, I was down for it. Um, I. I at that point, you know, my my whole thing was was like, you know, it's something to do is with my buddy, so why not? You know, I'll probably lose some weight in the process. I was looking lean too back in the day, so I decided to go. <laughs> I decided to go as that picture will prove. I'll post a picture as well uh, as the picture will prove. Anyway, on um, and so we go on this tour um, all over Maryland, uh, you know, Montgomery County, PG County, all these things. And, and we're going with Catholics and Protestants, and we go to different churches, uh, Catholics, non-denominational churches, whatever. People house us along the way, pilgrimage style, and we get up early in the morning. We, we have mass together. We pray together. We praise together. Um, and it was with high school kids. It was like a bunch of a team of high school kids and, and adults, you know, of course, adult supervision. And, and um, I don't know. And it was a cool experience. I mean, lots of good food along the way. All those families that hosted kids from the Face of Truth tour, that was pretty bomb, pretty baller. Um, a lot of dry chicken because y'all don't season your food. No, <laughs> you know what I mean by y'all? No, it's good. And, uh, and so it was so good. And I remember one day when we went to D.C., we were going to go to Nancy Pelosi's office or Nancy Pelosi's office. Like, you know, and I didn't know much about her. I like knew she was against, you know, um, she was against right. the pro-life movement and everything. She's very pro-choice and very, you know, and so as a kid, I'm, you know, ignorant. I'm like, all right, let's, let's go. And I'm thinking we're just going to silently, cause up to this point, we've just been silently with our signs praying across the street, not really messing with anybody. The only weapon I had on my hands was a rosary. Right. Right. Um, and then, you know, um, you know, signs and things like that. Um, anyway, point is they eventually tell us, Hey, we got permission. We got, we, uh, we have an audience to, to go into the offices and, um, Miss Pelosi, we believe Miss Nancy Pelosi is there, but she's acting like she's not. So I was like, all right, whatever. And then I see, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Norma, um, and she was the one that was with us. And um, she's just an old lady. Like, she's like a knitting old lady. Like, she's just cool. Um, kind of wild. Talks talks a big game. And she's very Southern style, like, kind of thing about her. I don't know. And and the, the documentary really helps, like, understand more about her, uh, which is on mm -hmm. FX now. You can watch. Um, but really, I was like, all right, I'm getting 
taking on this journey with her. So she kind of leads us through. And then eventually she, like, they started to chant, you know, like, we won't, you know, abortion is murder, but we won't pay for, you know, and, and it just got progressively louder and louder. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, we're about to get tossed out of this place. Like, what, you know, uh, and it was just really heavy. Uh, and then eventually we get into this uh, room and then, you know, one, a secretary for uh, Nancy Pelosi comes out, this is 10 plus years ago, um, comes out and says, she can't see you right now, um, but she, if you'd like, you can, you know, uh, leave a note or something, can I take a message? And, and Norma and this other guy um, decide to, you know, pray right there with everybody, with all the kids. And actually also, I was one of the only kids that were allowed in. They, it was a group of us, and I'm not saying it's because I'm Latino, but maybe. Uh, um, <laughs> there's a lot of that in the pro-life movement too, unfortunately. Um, I believe it. And so, and so they had me come up there. Uh, I was like one of four kids that, that got to come inside. And, you know, and we're, we're praying. And then all of a sudden, uh, Miss Norma grabs like this big box on this huge desk uh, in, in Nancy Pelosi's office. And Nancy's not there. Miss, Miss Pelosi's not there. And she grabs this huge box and she throws it on the table, on this big table, on this big desk. And um, is it a desk or is it a table? Who knows? Uh, she throws it. And all I see are, you know, those little baby fetuses, the little baby. Yeah, yeah. Like the life toys. Of, like your baby is this big. Like, yes. those so she had like a thousand of those. Oh, in, in this box, and, oh. you know, oh. boom. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was pretty wild. And it was just like very dramatic. And I think that that was her, that was her MO. That's, that's how she was. At least the little that I encountered, she was always to a hundred, you know, um, right. you know, level up. Yeah. Um, All the way. Yeah. And, cranked she, it up. And, and in her testimony, it was very much, I got this sense of like, I'm dedicating, and she would say it like, I'm dedicating my life to, to trying to undo the law that bears my name essentially. And, and I think I'm going to be taking this to the grave. I'm going to be consistently paying reparations for, for this uh, and asking for mercy and mercy and mercy. And that really touched the heart, my heart and touched so many of the hearts of the kids that were there. Um, we felt it was authentic. Um, and so that's the story behind like that picture that's there. That was like me right before, like she like launches all these baby fetuses on the um, picked our baby toys on this yeah. table. And, you know, we, we took our leave and she's like a gangster. She was a gangster with it. Like, honestly, hey. but, you know, she was a G man. Great she was a G. It's almost, it's almost as crazy as when my grandmother, who's also heavy pro-life, who she was the one that really got me. I mean, the only time we could skip school, man. Only time we could skip school is for that March for Life, dude. So we took it. And one time I was coming back home from college. And this was right around the time that the, remember like, again, maybe 10 years ago, <laughs> when they had the videos come out, the undercover videos against like Planned oh, yeah. Parenthood. Yeah, that was um, Project... Uh... Oh, that was Lila Rose, right? That yeah. Was her. Well, she starts it, but then it comes back up again later on. Okay. Um, um, oh, yeah. Or maybe that was the first time she came on the scene. But anyway, so it was really crazy. Like, that's when more security happened. More police were at the abortion clinics. We, we had guidelines of what we couldn't do as churches to go out and pray at the abortion mill and all that. Um, you know, standing safe distance. And I right. remember um, my grandmother telling me, she was like, um, she got like a taxi to the church and, and I picked her up from the church. I said, where are you, where have you been? She's like, Oh, I was at the clinic. I'm like, Oh, are you okay? You feeling all right? Like what, what kind of clinic? She's like, no, de aborto, de aborto. And I'm like, and I, yeah, like, I was upset, concerned. I was like, grandma, why, do, what are you doing there? And she was like, no, I just said I was waiting for somebody, you know? And I'm like, so, okay. And she's like, yeah, I just sat there. And I was like, oh, like for like 20 minutes? Like you wanted to talk to somebody? And she's like, no, I was there for like three hours. And I'm like, okay. And no one arrested, like, you're okay. Like everything fine. She's like, oh yeah, totally. And then when I was done, I put miraculous medals on all the seats in the clinic. And then I hung rosaries on the coat racks. And then I, and then I left. And I was like, 
dear lord like this woman is <laughs> crazy mom totally tagged that that Planned Parenthood clinic she's like she left her calling card <laughs> with a wet bandits I mean, miraculous metal you know you just, wow yeah straight D like, so, brother, like grandson yeah right and so the pro the pro-life stuff I mean it's it's on my heart. It's, it's been there. But when I was on this truth tour that, you know, um, face the truth tour, there was a lot of, a lot of things, but I'll get into that later. But the documentary, when I watched it and, um, I don't know, tell us a little bit, you saw the, the preview. What'd you get out of the little, uh, or the video that you saw? I don't know if it was on the doc, but what, what the mean, coverage recently? Right. So I saw some talking heads, you know, of like the, so one of the guys featured in the documentary, and then like the reporter and the creator, like the director of the project. And, you know, like I, by no means was I ever in the same room as Norma McCorvey. Um, I don't really know her deal. I'd heard that she was like, you know, pro-life along the way, you know, and had this change of heart conversion. And I just, you know, I used that as a talking point at some points along the way. But my impression of just like, just this, this, you know, um, interview about the movie or about the documentary and about her life um, is that, like, both sides have always had a vested interest in scoring points. You know, it is a political, a, such a heavily politically charged movement that, people involved like are definitely looking for ways to grab headlines and to you know get one over and um so like that makes that makes perfect sense like just in you know before like ever getting into the weeds of like you know what did she really believe and like ideologically what was she, what was her real stance or whatever you know i think both sides have always tried to play the the game that is politics to uh you know, to promote our, you know, our ideals and our values. And, you know, politics is politics. It doesn't mm -hmm. always, it doesn't always coincide with the rules of like, you know, what's in bounds per se, ethically. Um, but I'll say this, my impression of like the clips that they were showing of Norma were like, ah, uh, she was, you know, she had a tough life. Like you kind of see that immediately. She definitely has a tough life because she's like, she calls it her deathbed com confession. Mm -hmm. it's not easy to like watch her in that um, diminished state as it is. It, it's not easy to watch anybody um, deteriorate from, I don't know what she died of cancer or emphysema or COPD or whatever, but um, I'll. <laughs> she was like, smoking, man. She was. Heavy yeah, duty, yeah, that thing. right? Yeah, put down a cancer sticks, people. Stop, uh, stop, stop doing the chimney impression. Ultimately, my, my like what ran through my head and my heart was, you know, a prayer for her, and the reaffirmation that, like, wow, like this just confirms like why we don't base this stance, why we don't base our beliefs, our support of life and the dignity of life. On any person, on any celebrity, on any, you know, individual and their, you know, what they say, you know, like I've never been pro-life because of, you know, what, uh, trying to think of, you know, a famous pro-life or what Nick Cannon, you know, has, has said or, 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 or written or sung, you know, or Tim Tebow. I was probably pro-life to start because of what my You're mother said. Because of Bieber. Because of Bieber, um, that's true. I mean, yeah, he's on. He, I have a tattoo of Bieber on my, um, on my bicep. Lower because, nipple. Because, <laughs> because baby, baby, <laughs> baby, oh baby, 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 no, yeah. So he, <laughs> he's a good example of like you know there are there are you know celebrities on both sides, but like these pet issues that cut that get you know churned up in the media they always trot out you know different celebrity personalities They're, it's all kind of subject to like a very a very obvious logical fallacy of like an appeal to authority there are some brilliant people out there brilliant really gifted in their in their field 
And then they start talking about something that is not their field, you know? Mm-hmm. And we're, we just go right along with it. We're like, oh, oh okay. Oh, well, you know, if they say so. Right. Then and, and so that's where, and so that's where, like, I remember watching this or, or seeing the headlines and, and seeing the picture and everything and, and, and what it said, like the documentary is going to unravel like the pro-life movement. It's going to, I don't think it did. I mean, I, the sun came up the next day. I, it's always going to be a fight, you know, and, and unfortunately it's going to be in the political realm and that's where the battlefield's going to be. And that's a shame because that's not what, convinced me at all i mean yes if we're going to legalize it okay yeah it's there's got to be this level of lobbying and all that but there needs to be conversion of heart um and obviously like we're pro-life or whatever but i'm not here to argue like those points like that's another story for another day my thing is um what was this woman about and she had words uh but it was her witness of a person that was definitely broken and definitely hurting, like in this document, like that's what I saw. I saw a woman that was used. She was used early on by the pro-choice movement and then goes to the pro-life movement, right? Based on the conversion, she comes in, she gets baptized, all this stuff, right? She's honestly coming into faith. And -hmm. then here comes the pro-life movement and they also use her right back. Um, th- it was like tennis, like a ping pong or whatever. Like, here's a woman that just can't catch a break and was probably looking for an honest witness of doing it well. Like, if you believe in which I do, that the uh, the pro life movement is is rooted in the dignity of every human life and it is a good and needs to be fought for, then okay, then it needs to bleed into how you live your life. It's not just a political issue. It's not something you check off the box. I think, uh, and and one of the pastors in the documentary say that that the pro life movement failed her, and I think that's right. And I and I and I saw that doing the pro life stuff that that I did. I told you that um, I was asked to come up front a lot of times uh, because of the color of my skin. You know, um, I was asked to do like you know crazy things where um, we would be handing out leaflets. Oh, run away when you see them brochures and those leaflets, like. And it was like targeting like certain communities, like stuff for Latinos and not just because it was in Spanish, you know, but it was like stuff for, for, for blacks and saying like, where, where have all the black babies gone or or stuff like that. Like, and I was just like, oh, this is cheap. Like, you know, it's like, and, and, and as a, you know, college kid, like you're picking up on these things and you, and you're saying like, Hey, this makes me uncomfortable, whatever. And that's not even talking about like, some things that really, you know, was something heavy on us, which was like the, the pictures of the, of the aborted babies. Like, um, you know, is that okay to do and, and, and all that. But when it came to Miss Norma and, and seeing this stuff and, and watching the documentary, um, it was just a piece of, of uh, the FX was just trying to show her story. And she was, uh, she was uh, in a committed relationship uh, with a woman right and it was all about how the people were trying to hide that because if that got out it would ruin her credibility so there's some shyness there and there was a lot of pain uh behind those eyes and everything and and it was it was it was crazy also one of the the priests who runs the priest for life or whatever uh father frank pavone um you know obviously first name basis with norma talked to her on the day of her death was texting with her the whole time and was saying how and that Miss Norma would always say like, I'm done with the pro-life movement. Y'all suck. You know, when am I going to get paid? I got to pay this. Like she was always talk like that. She was always one day she was here, one day she was there. And how the documentary kind of made it sound was that she left the pro-life movement. And I don't think that's consistent to what she was doing when the cameras were off, you know? Um, But again, it's FX. You weren't, you know, if you were looking for a balanced, you know, doc, I mean, who's going <laughs> to give it to you? EWTN? Okay. You know? Right. Right. And isn't it interesting though, because like, I'm sure during those years when people thought that, you know, she was, and, and, and it's entirely possible that, you know, she did have um, a, a partial, but not complete, like, you know, change of heart or, you know, intellectual conversion or whatever. You know, um, th- these things don't all come as neatly as we'd like them to, you know, and, and all at once. But I'd say that 
what was, you know, what was the pro-abortion movement saying about her at such times? You know, it's just, it, it, her case just kind of gets highlighted as a tragic reminder of like, this is the core of what we're still striving for and still trying to get correct and, and, and make, you know, make the full effect of like the dignity of each life, including hers, um, be felt. And perhaps, you know, in retrospect, hindsight being 2020, like people will say like, okay, maybe she was one of those souls that should have just, it would have been better off, you know, being left alone, you know, to, to, you know, have her private life or whatnot. But uh, yeah, that's what, you know, time does for us. You know, it makes us second guess things and, and re-examine our, ourselves. But uh, my gosh, like if I, <laughs> if I changed a, an opinion every time because I thought it was more, you know, popular, I'd be so twisted up and so far away from the truth on some things, you know what I mean? Like, I'll never forget what one of my philosophy professors taught us about, about standing up for the truth. And we were having a whole discussion about Albert Camus and, and um, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre and their disagreements over uh, freedom, you know, and existentialism, because they were both big, you know, big wig existentialist writers. Yeah. And, um, you know, Camus used to like really take it to Jean Paul because like there was nothing in Sartrean existentialism that could like defend the French resistance, the, the resistance of the German, you know, occupation. Um, and yet he was a staunch supporter of, you know, of France. And, um, and yet like if, 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 the, if all that matters is just individual will, like, and my will overcoming your will, if hell is other people, you know, et cetera, et cetera, then you know, if I win, I win. Like that's that's how it's supposed to work. Um, but I I say that because he he said in while refuting this point, um, Father uh, Father Lauder, Father Robert Lauder, he said, uh, you know, if everybody it was a quote from like a play. If everybody is going in the wrong direction, then that one person who's like swimming upstream in the opposite direction seems like they're the one who's crazy, you know? And that left the, the desired lasting impact um, on my life. Like it, this is what we all hope that we have enough backbone to do is when we realize we're in a crowd and a sea of people just being herded along and going along with whatever narrative is promoted at the time, then yeah, I mean, and, and quite frankly, freedom of choice, <laughs> like is the word of the day <laughs> like it's it's everywhere and um and and it's just not it's not good for us it's not healthy for us to think of freedom in that context so going in the opposite direction makes us look like the weirdo and the standout and sometimes we need to uh got to that word first like, you know it's it's, tough. It's, like, <laughs> it's like oh it sounds good you know it's like but the pro-life thing it's okay, so you're not, like, it's hard, like, right, with, those, like, those kind of words, and so, so it's, like, I always look at it like this, it's, like, how I always explained about freedom was, it's not the license to do whatever you want, you know, um, it's the, uh, the availability, the ability to choose the good, right, to have those options, so you can make that choice, right, an informed decision, and I guess for me, like, even in, in 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 those formative years early on like when i was wrestling with it, it was like well what is true good and beautiful well what is right and what about you know the two balancing things this is something that saint mother Teresa really had it's uh they really spoke to which was you know um this balance of like lifestyle and just pure life your right to lifestyle doesn't way more heavily than the right to life the right the right to life comes before right to lifestyle kind of thing and it was um but then also it was this idea of um how do you get to that point and i think the pro-life movement can shoot itself in the foot by by using the tactics uh of the other side and right. and they're just plopping their you know themselves up there and just who has the louder mic right who can do the most outrageous things? I mean, even when those videos were coming out um, of the undercover stuff, part of me was like, is this right too? I mean, gotcha, you know, like, we got you, like, got you on camera, like, yeah, for the greater good, for babies, but 
means. I don't know, like deception. I, I don't know. But um, so how do you know what to do? How do you know where to go? Um, honestly, I think, and this is my next, my next transition, watch the transition, is the value of good, like discernment, maybe. Um, how do you discern the, what's true, what's good and what's beautiful when the noise of politics and when you can't watch Fox news, you can't watch CNBC, you can't watch CNN, fake news. Like when you can't, when you can't do all this stuff, like how do you discern what's right when there's as many reasons to say that the pro choice debate is right. And there's many reasons to counter that and say the pro-life is right in the age of the internet uh, and whatever Wi-Fi you have, uh, you can find things like that. And it's just going to be always back and forth, tip for tat kind of stuff. And it's just like, you know, what do you do? And can you talk about the value of like, for us, man, of like proper, like discernment and how I thought of discernment was just like hearing God's voice knowing right. the truth, figuring out the truth. Can you talk about that a little bit, man? Like just Absolutely. in layman's terms, like, because I think that's Evolve where that. it's really in. Amen. There's, there's definitely a distinction to be made already at the out, out, outset of my answer um, uh, between like the discernment of, of spirits, the discernment of our vocation and of, um, like theological ideas and truths, and then the discernment that that we do, like the prudential consideration and examination of conscience that we do, it you know using our consciences to uh, to just like to know right from wrong. Those are definitely separate because when we we talk about the former, or really when you know the spiritual masters talk about the former, and no one's bigger in this game, I think than. St. Ignatius of Loyola from a Catholic perspective. So this is where we get like all of those um, Ignatian scholars, self-appointed and like legit, you know, degreed individuals to write in and tell me like, wow, you've got that so wrong. But um, yeah, discern discernment of like, you know, my calling in life, um, where is like, where is where are you directing me? Like, what is your will for me? Um, that, that can only take place between good options on the floor, you know, or in the scales or, you know, in each hand. We so it's don't, not between good and bad things. So it's not between. Right. That kind of discernment is never possible between like, should I be a bank robber or <laughs> should I become like a seminarian or give, you know, priesthood a try? Like, that's just, that's just, it's absurdity because the one thing is so obviously not for our good but usually where you know we experience you know confusion is how how good the deceiver how good the evil spirit that uh saint ignatius often um uh, addresses and outlines like how he operates and how he's working on us um and and the fruits of his his working on us what that brings out in our in our being in our soul in our psyche uh like he's done a number on fudging the lines and blurring our vision so that like the very objective things that you just, uh, you know, um, listed for us not so long ago, like truth, beauty, goodness are now heavily considered, you know, but the majority considers those things as all very subjective realities mm -hmm. that like beauty is entirely in the eye of the beholder, you know, like art is just what we make of it. You know, art doesn't have to have any kind of purpose. It's just divorced from the, the laws of nature and communicating a transcendent reality. Art is just whatever we say art is, and it's totally like up to the person who is enjoying it. To, to, to Totally, to totally a shame because, I don't know, there's like always like some artwork and it's like, oh, this is beautiful. And it's like, nah, that's a straight line. Like, that's right, yeah. not even a straight line. That's like a squiggly line. That's not mm -hmm. art. Like... I forgot, I think in, in DC, my friend was telling me that there were like, there was like some secular like stations of the cross that was, well, that wouldn't make it secular, but there were like some stations of the cross. And one of them was just like a blank canvas with just like a, a big, like, like barcode line on it or whatever. And that was it. And I was, and, and, and someone was like, oh, that's beautiful. 
And it's like, right. Really? That's maybe interesting, but you know, I don't think it, it conforms or speaks of beauty itself. And of course, <laughs> like truth has become relative just by just, you know, you don't have to go digging around very far to find out the proof of that pudding because the expression like, you know, your truth, my truth, speak to your truth. It is not just like asking somebody to tell their story. Like we, we have like legitimately compartmentalized the idea of things that are true into, you know, separated by person, which is right. a little bit odd and impossible. And then, you know, goodness itself is like, wow, we have so many gradients of, of goodness and surely the fallen state of man, like makes our experience of this seem very plausible, but it doesn't change the fact that like, what is good? is good you know and that most of us get into some trouble in life by calling bad things good you know and thinking that those things are good for us so mm -hmm. uh this is my axe to grind for sure discernment is. Is like, yeah. uh, the goodness of man and the and the evil um uh, that is real and is out there has to do with like the fruits that it bears you know this is like one of the primary tools that the lord has given us like you will know whether like that that person is speaking my truth or is truly my disciple by the fruits that they bear you know and what it brings out in the spirit because the the evil one the evil spirit can't really attract by creation you know he works yeah, by destruction distortion, just, distortion. And, exactly so he, it, he totally he confuses things he makes you feel the fruit of that work makes you feel heaviness and um lost and uh well, even, fear doubt right i mean it, it, and it might be a temporary reprieve or a temporary satisfaction but there is no sustenance there he can't create yeah. that he can only distort that good he can only you know take away light um you know and so that's my thing it's like with, with this kind of thing it's like we have to look at the fruits of of our journey together. And that's kind of what the witness of people that have actually influenced me um, with their faith and with their witness testimony and their, them choosing life. Like, for example, like I said, like I'm pro-life, like that captivated me more than any kind of, you know, text or you are like, you know, link or video could ever do because it, 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 it spoke heart to heart and it, it was, con it was conversion based. And I think, that's what I liked about uh, Miss Norma or, or Norma McCurvey was, was that you saw it, man. I don't know. Yeah. Could she have had a bad day and left the pro-life movement? Yeah. There are times where I want to leave the pro-life movement. <laughs> there, are, there are times like, or like the, you know, like, but I know my conviction is not wavering. Like I know it's right, but dang it. Like you got to be a better job at, at holding that banner, you know? Uh, and yeah. I, I say that even with my, with my church too. It's like, I love my church. I die for my church. I'll take less money for my, with my church, you know, but dang, do we need to straighten out? You know, do we need to stand firm and do we need to call things out and, or make a ruckus, but it has to be a holy one. It has to lead you to the true, the good and the beautiful. And that's a journey, man. So I think during yeah. this time of COVID, like and we, it was a last, our, our couple of podcasts ago where we talked about like your, you know, how you spent your hobbies or leisure, like, is it leading you to truth, the truth? Not like subjective truth, like the flavor of the week, right? But actually something yeah. that is objectively true, right? Uh, objectively good, right? And, and, mm -hmm. and beautiful. And it's not to say that subjective stuff don't matter. It does matter. But it doesn't hold water when you're trying to cross out or, or toss out the, the, um, su the substantive the things that sustain. And, and so I think when I see these documentaries come out, I mean, bring them on. I mean, yeah, it's going to shed some light, but it's also going to throw a little shade too. Uh, no pun intended. It's going to, it's going to throw shade and it's going to try to confuse. And, right. um, and I don't know, this does nothing to make me think like, Oh man, I should have been pro not pro-life. Like it, it made me think like, yeah, this is true. Um, you know, both sides use people, both sides exploit people. Um, that's not of God. But uh, the stuff that we witnessed as high schoolers on this little Faith Truth tour, uh, where she was there, where, where she was present, that stuff stayed. Uh, her praying, her praying to the Divine Mercy, were per, you know, her um, 
the, the rosary stuff, like that was legit. Um, at least my point of view, my truth. Who knows? Uh, all right, man. All right, oh, drink man, your tea. Gonna the <laughs> gonna give me yeah, a I, I'd say, I'd say, like you know, thank you, thank you for for sharing your perspective on um, your experience in the life, the pro life movement. Thank you for your continuing presence and dedication to it. Um, right. and, and then let this be let let your let your witness be an encouragement to those who are like, you know what, I I would be so much more about like what that movement says if it weren't for da 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 da. da, da. Man, that those are the people. Those are the people we want to reach. You know, those are the people we want to like hook in because ultimately. <laughs> It's it's not a war of like gaining eyes, right? A competition of like who can get the most eyes like on you. It's a, it's a war of truth versus you know uh, non truth, non being. Yeah. Yeah, man. We just gotta keep uh, keep praying. And that's the tea. And that's the tea. <laughs> and that's the tea. No, and we got to make better documentaries. Uh, so there you go. Michael Jordan, uh, Tom Brady, uh, Norman McCorvey. Thank you for the docs. It's helping us through uh, this COVID time. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been rocking with the best. Your favorite podcast, favorite podcast, the Holy Ruckus Show podcast. Guys, do us a favor. Uh, get on there and uh, follow us on El Facebook, on El Instagram, at the Holy Ruckus. Uh, this is me. I had to post it on my personal because... Uh, Internet. Because technology. Because reasons. <laughs> reasons, of the reasons, reasons. There you go. Father Pat, man. Always lovely. My my uh, thoughts exactly. Love seeing your beautiful face, my friend. There you go, my brother. Take care of yourself. Uh, you we too. will be in touch. Ladies and gentlemen, for more episodes of the Holy Records Podcast, you know what to do. Go ahead and uh, head over to theholyruckers.com. There's uh, weekly blogs. We got some videos popping and uh podcast as well um we're also found on spotify on breaker podcast anchor.fm uh google play apple Podcasts, wherever podcasts are are there's where father pat shall be thank you very much <laughs> have a good night folks <laughs> to the end of time pray up yeah hold on let me let me end this video all right you there i'm here that's good, man. Made something out of nothing here. Thanks so much for rolling with the punches. I'm sorry that we uh, got started a little later than um, than I would have liked to, but I really value your time and thank you for your uh, your willingness to keep keep on this journey, man. We had quite a few people watching. We had as many as like 12 people watching it at one time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. COVID COVID makes this sort of thing flexible and easier. You know, it'll be it, it'll be different eventually. You know, but that time has not arrived yet. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Start thinking about start start thinking. Yeah, the ability to start thinking about how we want to navigate that. That way, we can you know adjust and stuff. Because I think um, I don't know. Do you do you think we could still keep it up? I do. Um, do we have to end the call to stop recording? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're 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 not. Hold on. Let me. I already.